te szybkie wiadomości, czy słychać i czy widać. Bo bez tych informacji nie możemy tutaj nic dalej powiedzieć. Hello from Zamość, la la, hello, hello. Nice to see you here. <laughs> Read rather. Czyli rozumiem, że, że słychać, skoro się witacie, hej, hej Łukasz, cześć. Słychać, ale nie widać. To everyone, widać, słychać. Dobrze, super, dziękuję bardzo. Więc tak, witamy Państwa bardzo serdecznie na naszych comiesięcznych spotkaniach online'owych. Z niektórymi z Państwa też widujemy się na żywo, także witamy teraz w innej trochę formie, natomiast Niektórzy tutaj z Państwa są z nami tylko, tylko online. Bardzo nam miło. Mamy tutaj jakby naszą tradycją już British School jest organizowanie tego typu webinarów co miesiąc. I jakby te webinary teraz z Marko są, mają na celu taki, takie są practical English, tak? gdyż Marko pochodzi z Australii, jest naszym tutaj native'em i, i wprowadza Państwu taki prawdziwy, żywy język. Zapoznaję Was, Państwa z takim prawdziwym, naturalnym bardzo językiem, tak? Także dzisiaj będzie bardzo dużo o idiomach, właściwie wszystko o nich i wiemy, wiemy lub nie wiemy, że idiomy to są takie wyrażenia, które specyficzne dla danego języka, tak? Nie da się tych idiomów przetłumaczyć dosłownie, tak? Wiemy, że w języku polskim to są typu, tego typu wyrażenia jak piąte koło u wozu, druga strona medalu, tak? Urwanie głowy, flaki z olejem. Wiemy, że to są tego typu wyrażenia zrozumiane w danej, danym, danej sytuacji, tak? W danym kontekście i oczywiście nie, nie da się tego przetłumaczyć na język angielski dosłownie. Tak, więc dzisiaj zadanie Marko jest pokazać Wam idiomy, jak one funkcjonują w języku angielskim i jak one, tak, jak, jak one brzmią tak, i w jakim kontekście się je, je używa. Także dobrze, no właśnie, tak jest, tutaj ktoś napisał przykład, tak, tak z olejem. Dobrze, więc zabieramy się do nauki, proszę bardzo o skupienie, przygotowanie tutaj, ewentualnie może jakiegoś długopisu i, i zeszyciku, żeby sobie zapisywać. No i przystępujemy do nauk. Przekazuję głos Marko. Bawcie się dobrze. Have fun! Uh, thanks Natalia and a very warm welcome to everybody to this uh, webinar. Uh, my name is Marco, yes, and tonight we're talking about idioms. And of course, this is a great chance tonight to use English, a little bit different to a class. Uh, yes, we want you to think in English. Yes, we want you to read some English. We also want you to write some English and to listen in English. So uh, great that you've already started writing. This first exercise, I'd like you to listen and see uh, Great to see you too. Thank you uh, for the nice messages. I'd like to just read something for you and see what you can understand. Okay, so using idioms is not necessarily a piece of cake, especially when you only hear them once in a blue moon. We know it's easy to get your knickers in a twist if you don't understand them. So that's why we're having this webinar to help you learn more. Hopefully, some you'll hear tonight will ring a bell although I shouldn't count my chickens before they're hatched. Okay, perhaps you'd like me to cut to the chase and stop kind of beating around the bush to tell you what's planned for tonight. Rather than play it by ear, I've organized a list of 16 idioms to share with you. Hopefully, I haven't been barking up the wrong tree and they are good choices. Actually, I'm keen to share more than 16, but I don't want you to bite off more than you can chew and to hit the sack too late, especially if you are feeling under the weather, like many people in Warszawa at the moment. I'd also like to kill two birds with one stone and teach you some interesting words like flair during this webinar. By the end, I hope we see eye to eye that these idioms are interesting and the webinar was a useful exercise. If not, I'll have to face the music with Natalia in fact, if you heard on the grapevine that she wants the best for the British school uh, Vavar clients, then the person was not pulling your leg. In fact, we all want the best for you. Enjoy the experience. 
Now, I'm not sure how much of that you understood, but for some of you, maybe it was like Chinese, a completely different language. So tonight we'll try to make things a little bit more clear for you, and we'll read this again at the end and see how much you can understand. So let's continue. Our first slide is basically, what is an idiom? What is an idiom? An idiom is a piece of cake. You mean a piece of cake, something you can eat? Of course not, yes? So idioms, basically, you take some words, like a piece of cake, which is something I really like eating, happy to eat one every day. But actually, a piece of cake is something that's easy. So it's a piece of cake. What are idioms? Well, they're a piece of cake. It's basically some words which together form a different meaning. That's what we'll be talking about tonight. Hopefully that's cool. And as someone said, it's an easy thing, absolutely. So let's have a look at some of these idioms. Now you have a, a photo here or an image, and um, I like you to think, what are you actually seeing at the moment? What can you notice? Now, if you think that it's female underwear, uh, then you're absolutely correct, yes? Now, if you live in the UK, we can call these knickers, basically, knickers. So we've got some knickers wrapped around the person, and they're a little bit twisted. So if we look at this uh, uh, image, what we can say is we don't want you to get your knickers in a twist. This is the idiom, the first idiom we'll really talk about tonight, to get your knickers in a twist. Basically, if you get your knickers in a twist, you, you're rather angry. You're a bit annoyed. You're a bit upset. So someone may say, you know, don't be angry. Don't get your knickers in a twist. And in this example we've got here, he's got his knickers in a twist about something. Don't talk to him at the moment. He's not very happy. Yes. So this is to get your knickers in a twist. You can use it if you're a guy. Yes, he's got his knickers in a twist. It's not just for people who wear knickers, um, although maybe some men like to wear knickers. But um, let's uh, kind of continue. <laughs> let's get that image out of our head. All right. What about this one? Maybe a little bit easier for you. What do you think this is? If, you, if you've got an idea, just write to me, please. Yeah. Uh, this one's much simpler. Maybe you've heard this one. Yes, thank you, Robert. Uh, to ring a bell. Something rings a bell. Yeah. Actually, this idiom rings a bell. I think I've heard it before. Absolutely, yes. So if it rings a bell, it sounds familiar. The name rings a bell. Yes. This idiom rings a bell. Ah, yes. I've heard of that place before. It rings a bell. Um, sometimes, oh, do you know this person? Ah, yes. The name rings a bell. Um, does he study at the British School in Bovard? Maybe. Okay, so maybe an easy one. Hopefully you've heard that one before. If not, in the future, it may ring a bell. Now, this is uh, quite good, I think, in autumn in uh, Varsava. Uh, what do we have here? We have some, we have a sun. Yes, we have a cloud. We have maybe some rain. And we have a man who's not looking uh, too well, basically. What do you think? Uh, he's sitting under something. Now, we could say under a cloud, but if we put all these things together, sun and clouds and blue skies, etc., we could maybe think of uh, being under the what. Um, and if you write, write under the weather, then you're absolutely correct. So this person is under the weather. Hmm. So what does that mean? That he's getting wet, uh, that he's getting a suntan? Hard to say. But actually, normally, if somebody says they're under the weather, like this man here, he doesn't look very well. So this is the idiom. Um, somebody's not feeling well, feeling a bit sick, essentially. You know, the weather hasn't been good. I've been feeling under the weather all week. Yeah, I'm really sorry. I'm under the weather. I can't join the uh, webinar tonight. Um, fortunately, you're here. Even if you're under the weather, the, the beauty of the webinar is that you can still join us and not make other people sick. So that's pretty cool. And uh, that's basically it. Now, if you're wondering about this uh, man and what he, what is he sitting in? Yeah, it's a pool of water. Uh, welcome, Shvetlana. And uh, the man sitting in a pool of water. What do we call this pool of water in English? Um, and yes, it's a pool of water. But there's another name that you might uh, be aware of that you've covered. Okay, so let me know if you've got an idea. I'm going to give you a clue slowly. Yes, who's that? Uh, oh, my Polish pronouncer. Apologies, uh, Um Super, a puddle. Yeah, we've basically got a puddle, the man sitting in a puddle. Yes, so he's feeling under the weather. It's not a good idea. Of course, if you sit in water, you're going to get uh, ill after a while. So, all right, what about the next one? Let's have a look. 
Hmm. So what do we have here? Uh, yes, we have a man with a very big nose, almost a bit like mine, and um, he's playing an instrument. And normally we play from our mouth, but he's playing it from where? So what do you think the idiom is? He's what? Mm, what do we think? So, yes, good, yeah, is a question mark. Um, keywords play and ear. I'm not sure if you've heard this one before. If you have, I'll be happy to hear from you. I'll give you a moment. If you play, so of course, if you, normally we play from the mouth. So if we play from our ear, basically the idiom is play it by ear, to play something by ear. Now, if you play something by ear, it's not so common, I guess, yes? Now, maybe normally you plan things, but actually this time I'm going to play it by ear, see what happens. And this is the idiom. So rather than uh, plan things and, and follow the plan, we'll just see what happens. We'll see how the situation develops. You know, for example, um, uh, you know, I have 16 idioms, but I'll play it by ear. If we go quickly, I can add a few more. If the video. Okay, we're back. Um, if, uh, if we're taking longer, I might shorten it. I'll play it by ear, see how we go. So this is quite common. Um, so we don't know how many people will come, so we will just play it by ear. We'll see how it goes. So this is a very nice idiom as well. Okay, now this one. Maybe this one's a little bit more familiar for you. Uh, of course, we have well, I don't think you have to, um, you don't need a telescope, actually, a telescope to see this. Normally, you can see this quite clearly from the street. What are we seeing? Even if you don't know the idiom, how would you describe what you see, basically? What are you looking at right at the moment? Yeah, it's a blue moon. So it's a blue moon, but there's an idiom. It's a little bit longer. And think about it. how often do we see a blue moon? Is it every day, every month, every year? Anytime? What do you think? Has anybody heard this expression before, this phrase, uh, this kind of special idiom? So a blue moon. They're not very common. Absolutely. So no, okay, you haven't heard it. I'm going to type it it's on this page here. Very rarely, yes, we don't see a blue moon very often, if ever. So it's once in a blue moon. How often does it happen? Yeah, not very often. Once in a blue moon. For example, my brother, quite seriously, um, lives in Australia. So unfortunately, I only see him once in a blue moon. And uh, at the moment, it's like years. And uh, so not very often. So um, I guess, yeah, you can think of your own example. Things that you don't do very often. Uh, and for, you know, I'd like to exercise more, but I only seem to do it once in a blue moon. Um, so yes, absolutely something that happens very rarely. And uh, for example, uh, warm weather in Warszawa in uh, August, <laughs> you know, nice days, once in a blue moon, not very often, I would say. Okay, now, what about this one? So yes, if you uh, see two birds, absolutely, two, yes, thank you, Robert. To kill two birds with one stone. To kill two birds with one stone. Now, let's have a look at this one. What does it mean? Now, I'm going to give you a clue. Let's see. I've even got some uh, Polish here. Uh, apologies for my pronunciation. Upiec dwie pieczenie na jednym ogniu. Jak to jest, yeah? That's the idea, yes? You are basically achieving two things with one effort, basically. So, yeah, two things at the same time. For example, we plan to meet, yes? Hey, let's meet in the last here in Onion. And uh, actually, no, let's say we normally meet at the school. But uh, rather than meet at the school, we say, let's meet in the, uh, the, the forest. And we can also get some exercise. And we can kill two birds with one stone, because I really need to exercise. But I also need to practice my English. So we could do that. Uh, that's killing two birds with one stone. And uh, what else? Even having this webinar. Uh, you can be at home as well as still learn English, have a class, killing two birds with one stone. Very nice option uh, late at night on a Thursday. Sounds good. So that's a good one. Now, that's six idioms we've covered already. Now, you may be thinking it's already too much. So we should review these, I think. It's a nice idea uh, to see how we're going. So I'm going to test you in a sense, a little exercise. We've got six sentences and, or, and even some questions. Uh, I'd like you to fill in the blanks. What goes next? So, write them down, yeah? Number one, 
share it with everybody, but uh, just have a think. So I'll do a little bit of think music. Okay. Very quiet, lots of thinking. Um, if you just know one, yeah, just write the number and uh, write the idiom you think it is. And uh, either at home or share it with us would be nice just to know that you're still with us. Okay, so number one. So it's good, yeah, let's, I'll give you another, what do we think, another 30 seconds. Not so easy. Okay. Let's go step by step. There's still a few responses coming through. All right, let's go. Number one, fortunately, it only happens. Absolutely, there's a few nice responses here. Once in a blue moon. It only happens once in a blue moon. Fortunately, yeah. So this is probably what? Something good or something bad? No, probably something bad. That it, Fortunately, it only happens once in a blue moon. Uh, for example, earthquakes. Yes, if you, uh, like me, lived in somewhere like India or China, fortunately, the earthquakes only happen once in a blue moon, not so often. Number two, does this person, yes, I, we saw Marta, yes, ring a bell. Yeah, does this person ring a bell to you? Yeah, do you know them? Um, yes, they ring a bell. Yeah, I've heard that name before. I think I know that person. Okay, number three, there's no reason to, and I saw another answer here, to get your knickers in a twist. To, or in Australia, we actually say to get your knickers in a knot, which is a knot like you tie uh, your shoelaces. Um, there's no reason to get your knickers in a twist. Everything will be, will be fine. Just relax. Yeah, there's no reason to be angry, no reason to be upset, no reason to be annoyed. So what can we try to do? We can try to... Yeah, play it by ear. We can try to play it by ear. Let's see how it goes. You know? Yeah, we've got a plan, but let's play it by ear. We can try it. You know, worst thing that happens is it doesn't work. All right, so unfortunately, I'm, what have we got left? I'm under the weather. I'm not feeling well, and I can't join tonight, yes? Unfortunately, I'm under the weather, and I can't join tonight. How about we, what can we do? What's left? Is it the kill uh, two birds with one stone? Let's have a look. Yes, kill two birds with one stone. How about we kill two birds with one stone and we do something, this and this together. So here's the, the full answers. If you've done those, fantastic. If you've got one or two, fine. Uh, more work later. And um, But I hope you're getting started to get a feel for these idioms. So they're rather interesting, yes? They're completely, sometimes completely different to uh, what the words you read. It's, it's, it's just something uh, rather unique. All right, so there's the first six. Let's change a little bit. Uh, we've got some that are similar to some Polish ones. So let's start with this uh, nice photo. Now, I would say this is rather cryptic. Cryptic, uh, I'm going to put that word. Not so clear. Something's a bit cryptic. Mm, you need to really think hard about this one. Uh, okay, what have we got? We've got an animal. I, I don't know. What is it? A squirrel? Is it a hamster? I, I'm really not sure. Um, let me know if you do know, uh, if you're an animal lover and an animal specialist. Um, but this animal has a lot already in its mouth. Its mouth is quite full, but it's still trying to put more stuff in. So uh, it's, and you have to think about these words. Is at the when stuff is in your mouth, you generally try to what? You try to, hmm, what's the word? Help me with some words here. I forgot the English word for this. When you're in. The food's in your mouth, and what do you have to do? You have to, 
Let's see if anyone's got these. Um, so uh, chew. Thanks, Robert. Yeah, absolutely. You need to chew. Yeah. So this one, this animal is biting at the moment, biting a peanut. It looks like a peanut while he's chewing or she. I'm not sure. So biting and chewing, trying to bite off more than you can chew. Yeah. It's like you already have enough to do. It's already difficult and you're trying to do more. And this is the, this is the problem when you bite off more than you can chew. So it kind of makes sense. So this is the idiom. It looks like this yeah? to bite off more than one can chew or you can chew. Trying to do too much of something or doing uh, something that's too hard for you. Um, so maybe, for example, trying to learn 16 idioms in 40, 45 minutes is maybe trying to bite off more than you can chew. Yeah, especially if they're all new. I understand if half of them are new. OK, maybe it's not biting off more than you can chew. So. Um, sometimes some people, they're very ambitious, they want to achieve a lot, so they take on more work, more projects, and they often, maybe, you know, you're biting off more than you can chew with this job, so we can have that kind of statement. All right, so that's that one. What about this one? What have we got here? So, uh, if you can see eggs, absolutely, but uh, you have to think, what's inside the eggs? Now, you know, uh, what can grow from these eggs when they open? Now, when we talk about eggs opening, this is the first thing. Yes, we can crack an egg. Yes, we crack an egg when we're making a cake, for example. But when you have a little chicken inside, yes, a chick, the egg does something else. It actually is called hatching. So the egg hatches. So uh, one part of this idiom is about hatching. Yes, chickens hatching. The other one is about these numbers, we're actually, what are we doing? We're, we're numbering the eggs and we're kind of counting. Ah, one, two, so we're counting. Hmm, so we're counting our chickens. We're counting before they've hatched, before they've opened. Okay, so do we know how many chickens are going to come from all these eggs? Actually not, yeah, we have to wait to see what happens. But maybe we expect, I don't know, 13, that we're going to have 13. We're excited, yes, and we've already sold them to somebody. Yes, I have 13 chickens. But actually, maybe not all of them will uh, hatch. So this is the idea. Don't count your chickens before they're hatched. Basically, yeah, don't make plans that depend on the success of something until you're certain that they're successful. Okay. So don't make a plan to sell 13 chickens when actually maybe only 10 will hatch. This is the idea. And we don't want to get too now. Someone's got a nice, uh, I don't know if it's this one, Yekval, Nyapshed, Sakhodin, Swansa. I think that's the one, actually. I've got this, uh, don't count your chickens. Let's see. Maybe later we'll, we'll see if that's, a, if that's a good one. But um, sounds like there's something similar in Polish. I'll test you later to see if that's true. But yeah, so I'm feeling positive. I'm, you know, but I don't want to count my chickens before they're hatched. Yeah. So for example, you're going for a job. Um, you think you've got the job, but don't count your chickens until they're hatched. Let's wait until I get the final contract, yes, or until maybe my first day, um, or even after you know a week or whatever. So that's the idea. What about this one? Okay, we've got, what have we got in the middle? This is a clue. We've got something in the middle. There's one word, kind of tree. Yes, a bush. Thank you, Robert. So we've got a bush. We're going around the bush, okay? And what are we doing around the bush? What is this, um, I don't know, is it a monkey, gorilla? It's, okay, it's playing a drum, but we have another word for this. And uh, yes, it's hitting the drum, but it's something else. So the combination of these, maybe you've heard this one. Yeah, so beating your, thank you again. Um, ah, this is tough for me, Mieczysław Swaba. Uh, stop beating around the bush, to beat around the bush. Now that's interesting, what are you doing? So you're going around the bush, not kind of into the bush. This one's interesting. If you look at the history of this idiom, basically in medieval times, some, you know, hundreds of years ago, when um, hunters were looking for animals, they would go to trees like this, and they would try to get the animals to come out. So they'll take a big stick, and uh, they would hit the bush, beat around the bush, to try to get the animals to come out, and then attack them. So this is the idea. But what does it mean to beat? You're beating around the bush. Okay. Now you're saying, uh, what have we got here? Um, you're saying something and you're just, like right now, I'm beating around the bush. I'm not telling you directly what it means. This is beating around the bush, yeah? You just, what is it? What does it mean? Tell me. Stop beating around the bush. Tell me what it means. Here it is. Uh, to avoid talking about what is important. So if you beat around the bush, you're not saying what's important. 
So you may hear this, for example, stop beating around the bush and tell me the truth. What, you know, tell me what's wrong. Yeah, someone, yeah, I've got this problem, but really what's wrong? Stop beating around the bush, get to the point. That's the idea, get straight to the point. So beating around the bush, maybe you've heard this one before. And I've got, uh, okay, we've got some, um, some people who are making nice comparisons with uh, Polish. So we'll, we'll come back to that, hold that thought, uh, Robert. And uh, one more for you before we do a little, little exercise. What's happening here? Uh, you will never see this happening at British School Bubba. We don't, we respect each other. We don't do these kind of crazy things. And, um, but yeah, what can you see? Yeah, to pull, thank you, to pull somebody's leg. Uh, bravo again, Mieczysława. Uh, Swaba. I'm getting more fluent. Yes, just practice. You just have to practice your fluency. Hopefully I'm sounding it, uh, saying it fine. And uh, yeah, pulling somebody's leg. What does that mean, to pull somebody's leg? Yes. Um, you know, are you serious when you're pulling somebody's leg? Is this um, yeah, a good thing? Well, if you're pulling somebody's leg, uh, yeah, to, to, to have a joke on somebody, to joke uh, with somebody, um, in Australia, it's, it's maybe not, not, we basically call it to, to take the piss, essentially. Um, and I think maybe even in uh, the UK, they may use this, to take the piss, to have a bit of fun, to kind of tell someone something that's uh, not true as a bit of a joke, yeah? Um, uh, yeah, tomorrow's a holiday. Um, no, I'm just pulling your leg. It's not true. It's just a joke, yes? And uh, so maybe you've made somebody upset and uh, they start crying and say, no, don't cry, it's not true, I'm only pulling your leg, please, please, it's, it's, uh, it's not very true, just relax here, yeah, to pull somebody's leg. Okay, we like to do that in Australia, to pull people's legs. Quiz. We've got uh, four Polish kind of idioms, yeah, really, expressions, and which ones are they? And I think some of you already kind of have uh, worked this out, but I'm not gonna pronounce them, you can read them uh, much better than I can pronounce them, let me know, number one, two, three, and four. What have we got? What do they match to? What's their equivalent? Have a guess. And let me know. Okay. Now check with, with my wife and she told me that, you know, you do use these in, in Polish, um, like we use the, the idioms in English, so they certainly exist. I think that's enough uh, think time from my perspective. Um, let's have a look. So, yes, I'm not, I'm not even going to pronounce them, they'll be too embarrassing. No, I should because it's important when we're learning languages just to try, even if the pronunciation is bad, etc. It's more important to try, so let's go with it. Uh, yes, uh, beat around the bush. So, dzielić skórę na niedźwiedziu, coś takiego. And uh, counting your chickens before they're hatched. Podewać się z mateką na słońce, słońce. And biting off more than you can chew. And nabić kogoś w butelkę. So, uh, there we go. There's um, some Polish equivalents. Nice. Okay. So it looks like from the responses that, uh, thanks, Wukash, you're very kind, uh, commenting on my Polish. Um, all right, so we've now hit 10 idioms. Uh, hopefully many are new to you and you've still kind of got an idea what they're about. We've got six more uh, before we have one more exercise and then we're gonna kind of bring them all together and see what you've uh, remembered, what you've learned. Now, the next one is a little bit trickier, I would say. Uh, again, cryptic, um, maybe you know it. So, cryptic, not so easy. You have to think about this one. Okay, first one, yes, what do we have? If you say scissors, you're absolutely correct. Uh, some scissors. Now, what do we do with scissors? Uh, we cut hair, we cut, basically, yes, to cut. So cut, the next one, we have an arrow. We're going somewhere, we're going to. So we cut to the, I'll add a the, there's no circle for it. And, uh, okay, we've got a, Kind of uh, someone, yes, cut to the someone, cut to the, what is this person, uh, cut to a long story, sh cut a long story short, not bad, I like that idea, uh, I really like that idea, to cut a long story short, absolutely, but it's not the idiom I was looking for. This person's running, 
Now, okay, you're running. You may be actually trying to catch somebody. Yes, you may be chasing somebody. So you're going to cut to the chase. So this word chase, to cut to the chase. What does that mean? To it's really weird. Yes, when you put these words together, it's hard to make sense of what, what's going on. Cut to the ch just cut to the chase. Again, I'm beating around the bush. I'm kind of going around in circles. I'm not telling you what cut to the chase is. And you're probably saying, Marco, please cut to the chase. Get to the point, please, sir, now. Okay, so let's do it. Cut to the chase. Get to the point. Get to the main point. Tell me what it is. Stop going on and on. Cut that long story short. Similar idea, yeah, Mr. Swaba. Um, just cut to the chase. What is it you want? Tell me what you want. What do I need to do? And um, so maybe you've got a child, if you've got an employee or a partner who comes to you and they want something, yes, they're being very nice and, ah, oh, you know, you look great today and ah, oh, blah, 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 blah. And you just go, what do you want? Just cut to the chase. Tell me what you want, yes? What can I do for you? Um, that's how we might use this word. So it's a very nice expression, very nice idiom. Um, difficult to understand when you look at all these words together, but cut to the chase. Okay, two more for you. This one should be easier. I even added a few words for you. So for our pets lovers, like myself, uh, on the left, we have a dog. And where the dog is, yes, bark, bark. Uh, now, there's a couple of trees and uh, to, okay, very close there, Mr. Swaba, to, uh, to bark the wrong tree. Uh, we just need, uh, it's actually a kind of a phrasal verb. So the dog is, what direction is the dog going, barking? So basically, if, if you bark up the wrong tree, not the smartest dog, absolutely. And that's, that's the thing, yeah? So if you put... If you bark up the wrong tree, you're kind of wasting your energy. Maybe you're not the smartest dog or you got some wrong information. This dog was told the cat would be on the tree on the left, but actually the cat, of course, cats are pretty smart, has changed trees, yes. So, but this rather silly dog, we must say, yes, not the smartest dog, is still barking, expecting the cats there. This is what's happening. So if you bark up the wrong tree, you're kind of doing something that won't get the result you're looking for, essentially. So. Like if you're a police person, I'm not sure if we have any uh, policemen, police women uh, joining us or from the Straż Miejska, Dobre Wieczór. And, um, but yeah, maybe sometimes you do an investigation. Someone gives you a tip, they tip you off. Here's a nice little phrasal verb, uh, a bonus for tonight. Tip you off. They give you some a tip, yes, a little, it's a clue that, hey, maybe this person knows something and maybe this person's responsible. So you put all your energy in the investigation, but actually you're barking up the wrong tree. Um, it's somebody else who's uh, really responsible. So it's kind of what it means to bark up the wrong tree, you're using a lot of effort for, you know, without the result. So if you, and you can use it in a different way, yeah? If you think he's going to help you, no, you're barking up the wrong tree, you've got it wrong. Um, this person is not going to help you. So this is a bit, little bit more abstract, not so clear. Barking up the wrong tree. Okay, maybe you've heard this one before. Now, another more, a, a tough one, let's say. Not so clear what's going on. Um, yes, on the left, we can see a head, and but we can actually, I'm, I want to focus on this part of the head. So what do we call that? And if you're thinking the face, super, yes. So face the what? Now, we've got some, in, in, in music, we call these uh, notes, essentially, yeah? So if, if those who play music will know these as, as various notes. And, um, but the notes are basically clues to make music. So here we've got somebody fa facing the music, to face the music. Hmm, what can that mean? This is another one of those, it just, it's really kind of weird to think, uh, when you know what it means, I'm, I'm beating around the bush again, um, I'm taking a while to cut to the chase, to face the music. What do you think? I'm facing the music. If you face the music, you're actually, you've done something wrong, and now's the time to find out your punishment. That's the idea. So you have to accept some punishment or criticism for something you've done wrong. Yeah? I made a big mistake. Um, I'm teaching you idioms, but actually I was meant to teach you phrasal verbs. <gasps> Oh, no, um, I have to face the music now. No, of course not. But this is the idea. Yes, you've, you've done something wrong. Time to face the music. There's a very nice quote here. I'll let you read it. Yes.
Okay, so there's an anonymous quote, yeah? Anonymous, what does that mean, yeah? So it's, um, we don't know who the person was who made this quote. Um, and the quote says, a real leader faces the music, a real leader takes responsibility, accepts the criticism, yes? Um, the punishment, it may even be the punishment, even when he doesn't like the tune, even when he's not happy with whatever that punishment is, or, so it's really taking responsibility. So this is a quite, quite nice quote. And uh, so face the music. Hopefully you don't have to face the music too much uh, uh, in your life. But, you know, if you're responsible, you take responsibility. Just, okay, I need to face the music, see what happens. Here's a different one. So, and uh, now with our face, we've got our eyes. These are actually, yeah, super. We've got an eye to eye, but it's, it's a, the idiom is a little bit bigger. So we've got eye to eye, absolutely. But what are they doing? They're um, kind of looking eye to eye, but it's similar to looking, but you're, so I can't look you, but I can't, I can't, no, it's not stay, but I can't, hmm, unfortunately, I, you can, me, but I can't, you. So, yeah, with this video, you can see me. So, we can, if you see eye to eye, thank you, uh, Ludwig, yeah, to see eye to eye. You see eye to eye. Now, what does that mean? You see eye to eye. You're, are you looking into each other's soul? Uh, I'm not sure. This one's maybe uh, not so common, in a sense, but it's a very nice one, to see eye to eye. So, if you see eye to eye, you agree, basically. You have the same opinion, yeah, that we see things the same. That's the idea. We see things the same. So, we have the same idea. To basically agree with someone or to have the same opinion as them. To see eye to eye. Yeah. So generally speaking, Natalia and I here, we see eye to eye. Yes. Um, we like to do things in a similar kind of way. Yeah. So we have a similar opinion about uh, doing something and how to do it. This is seeing eye to eye. And um, um, now you may have this situation where two people, they complement each other. Now, if you were joining us previously, you may know the difference between compliment and compliment. Yes, to compliment somebody, ah, that's a nice um, sweater you have, or that's a nice scarf that you have. Yes, to compliment, uh, and uh, you'll know that that spelling of compliment is like this. But in this case, they complement each other. They go well together. Yeah, they complement each other. This person talks a lot. This person doesn't talk a lot. They make a good couple even though they don't see eye to eye, even though they don't agree with each other to see eye to eye. Okay, I've got two more idioms for you. We're at number 14, let's go to number 15. You may actually be feeling like um, wanting to do this. And feeling like wanting to do this, to like to, to punch a bag. Uh, so we've got a, I guess it's a kind of boxer in this case, uh, with some gloves on and punching a bag. Now, it's not, Punching, uh, there's another word in this case. So if you're thinking of different words to um, to do that movement, that movement, uh, yes, to hit. So in this case, hit is a key word. To hit the what? Now it is a bag, but it's a special kind of bag. Um, if some of you have lived on a farm in the village, you may know, these, you see these kind of bags. They're filled with grains. They're filled with um, sand sometimes when you're uh, stopping water from coming uh, to your property to hit the roof. We're not kind of to hit the roof is a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, so we're not hitting a roof. We're actually hitting a bag. And in this case, we call it the sack. So it's to hit the sack. Now at this time of night, you know, 10 past nine, Thursday, long week, uh, maybe you're feeling under the weather and, uh, you know, you may be starting to feel a little bit sleepy. You may want to put your head on a kind of pillow. You may want to hit the sack. What do you think to hit the sack? If you're thinking, I need, I'm feeling tired, I feel like sleeping, you're absolutely correct, yes? I need to hit the sack. I need to go to sleep, essentially, to take a nap, perfect, yeah? And it's more than a nap, I would say, Robert, that I would say it's really going to sleep, having a good sleep. It's, it's time I hit the sack. I'm so tired, I'm beat tired. I really need to go to bed, I really need to hit the sack. And sometimes we may say, hit the hay, essentially, to hit the hay. The hay is that uh, dry grass that, um, you know, horses eat, uh, many animals eat, and sometimes, uh, you know, you may fall asleep on if you've had too many vodkas or something and you can't be bothered walking back to your bed and you find some nice comfortable hay, um, you'll hit the hay, you'll go to sleep. That's it. That's it. So I've got a busy day tomorrow, so I think I'll hit the sack. Good night. That's number 15. One to go. Um, here we go. 
a nice picture, this one. And uh, so what have we got here? Okay, we've got a person. They're holding their ear. So they probably, either they're listening, but actually they've heard something. Okay, they've heard something. Where have they heard it from? They heard something. Mm. Now, it's not directly from me or from you. Not directly. They heard it on something, on the what? Now, what's this? You know, this tree, in a sense, uh, around this person, that, where we, we can see grapes. So we can see grapes. Now, uh, for those of you who like wine, like myself, uh, you may visit wineries and you may see these um, special kind of trees that grow grapes. So you've heard something through the tree that grows grapes. I heard it through the grapevine. I heard it through the grapevine. Interesting. You heard it through the... What does that mean? Yeah, I heard something through the grapevine. Well, you didn't hear it from me. Yeah, I've got some news. You didn't hear it from me. You heard it through the grapevine. So you heard it from somebody else who heard it from somebody else. Yes, it's a kind of um, uh, gossip or something. I think in Polish you have a nice one. Uh, for example, pochtom pantoflovom, if I believe. This kind of stuff. Yeah, we're, still, we're talking a bit about gossip and news that you hear from somebody else. This is basically hearing something through the grapevine. It looks like that. To hear something, to learn something through an informal means, not through the, the person or official announcement. Um, kind of gossip. It could be gossip, yes. I heard through the grapevine she's leaving, yes. I heard through the grapevine they're, cho they're going to recruit this person that we saw earlier. Whatever, I heard through the grapevine, yes. And uh, you're not sure, you're not 100% sure. It's a bit of gossip, it's some news, but you heard it through the grapevine. Now, um, this is actually, I'm going to see if I can. For those of you who uh, like music, like myself, after the webinar tonight, when you're ready to hit the sack and you just want to kind of chill out, um, play some nice tunes, I've given you a link and uh, you will hear something else through the grapevine. You'll hear a fantastic song by Marvin Gaye. Um, I heard it through the grapevine. So check it out. Seems not many people in Poland know it. I guess uh, most of the people I spend time with are, are younger than me. But um, even if you don't know it, I highly recommend it. Give it a listen and you'll hear this phrase, to hear something through the grapevine. Okay, that's the 16. Let's test those last six. Let's see how well you've kind of understood these uh, idioms. So I've got a, a quite a you know more challenging quiz for you. Uh, we've got some... Um, you know, uh, smart people who uh, come to the British School Bubble. So let's see. Uh, we've got some different phrases, sentences, uh, expressions, and you need to rearrange the story. You need to uh, to put it in the correct order, basically. Yes, so it makes sense. So it flows. So there's a nice flow. So this story. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes for this one. When you have it, just see if you can put the letters in the right order, and let's see how you go. Have a go. Yeah. I think there's only one right answer, but let's see. Interesting. <laughs> huh? uh, excellent efforts uh, so far, what I've seen. I'll give you another 30 seconds if you're still working through some stuff.
Okej. Okay. Po polsku można powiedzieć rewelacja dla mnie, rewelacja na pewno, because uh, I had something completely different. <laughs> I love it. I seriously love it. Um, but I, I can see how uh, you came up with what you came up with and I need I actually need more time to study it, but uh, uh, it's looking okay. It's looking okay. So let's. Uh, m I think everybody here is starting with. I'm a little worried because I heard on the grapevine that my boss is not happy with me. Nice. Yes. Now most people have chosen uh, D. However, we often see eye to eye on things, so everything should be fine. Sounds cool. Okay. Then we've got some a mixture of kind of um, what do we got? Some C's, B's, E's. A real mixture of stuff. Yeah. So it's, it gets a bit messy how we do it there. Now. Um, maybe I, I need to actually start here to, to check uh, whether it can really work uh, on one of these. But I'll show you what I came up with and, um, and then, yeah, uh, let's have a look. Okay, so I start with before I hit the sack, um, E. Before I hit the sack, so before I go to bed, let me cut to the chase to explain the situation. Let me get to the point to explain the situation. Basically, I've been wasting my time at work barking up the wrong tree, spending time doing the wrong thing. Now I need to face the music with my boss who's sitting over here. I'm a little worried because I heard on the grapevine my boss is not happy with me. However, we often see eye to eye on things, so everything should be fine. Everything should be fine. Now, hopefully, you agree with me that this story flows, that it's kind of, you know, it kind of makes sense. There's nice connections. Um, what can I say? I like the idea of it, it makes sense to me. I'm a little worried because of this. However, we often see that kind of F uh, D connection kind of works well. Then I'm not sure. I really need to kind of play with it a bit more. The thing is, it doesn't really matter, to be honest. The main thing is, if you have understanding these idioms, um, that's really the point of the exercise. Of course, more challenge then is to use these idioms. Yes. Yeah? So the generally speaking, with language learning, we want to learn something first, understand it, um, and then we'll start trying to apply it. Yes. And that takes a bit of practice. For those of you who join us um, during the week, yeah, practice with your teacher, um, practice with your family, friends, etc. Um, for the rest of you, yeah, practice at home and, and just read up about it. And um, you know, hopefully, you, I, I hope the more you read, the more you watch TV shows, films, etc., listen to podcasts, you'll start hearing these expressions being used. And I can really promise that they live. Uh, just the other day, a friend of mine invited me for a coffee. And um, and I said, ah, I know the cafe. It's near my hairdresser. And he said, ah, we can kill two birds with one stone. You know, we can have a coffee and you can get a haircut at the same time. Um, now he just wrote that in a text message, and, and quite literally, we do use these things. Ladies and gentlemen, fine people of uh, Vavid and uh, beyond Vavid, that's the end of our time. So yes, that's all for now. I do wish you happy studying. Hope to see you at a future webinar. You know that I may be hosting. And or somebody else is hosting, yeah, because uh, we we do try to mix it up as well. We've had a few different uh, hosts. Um, pleasure for me. Hopefully, you've learned a few new uh, idioms. Now, just to wrap it up, yeah, the last thing we want to do. I'm just, uh, you know, if you've got, if you're not too tired, if you don't want to hit the sack quite yet, have a listen. I'm going to read the same thing I said at the start. I'd like you to see if you can kind of follow the conversation. So here we go. Using idioms is not necessarily a piece of cake especially when you only hear them once in a blue moon. We know it's easy to get your knickers in a twist if you don't understand them. So that's why we're having this webinar, to help you learn more. Hopefully, some you'll hear tonight will ring a bell, although I shouldn't count my chickens before they're hatched. OK, perhaps you'd like me to cut to the chase and stop beating around the bush to tell you what's planned for tonight. Rather than play it by ear, I've organized a list of 16 idioms to share with you. Hopefully, I haven't been barking up the wrong tree and they are good choices. Actually, I'm keen to share more than 16, but I don't want you to bite off more than you can chew and to hit the sack too late, especially if you're feeling under the weather, like many people in Warsaw at the moment. I'd also like to kill two birds with one stone and teach you some interesting words like flair during this webinar. By the end, I hope we see eye to eye that these idioms are interesting and the webinar was a useful exercise. If not, I'll have to face the music with Natalia. In fact, if you heard on the grapevine that she wants the best for British school Vavid clients, 
then the person was not pulling your leg. In fact, we all want the best for you. Enjoy the experience. That's basically it. Hopefully, that kind of short story, that paragraph is a lot more clear for you. If so, fantastic. Good work with listening and learning. Uh, the last thing I should say is I promise to teach you uh, some new words like flair. Flair. What is flair? If you do something with flair, you do it with some style and some skill. Yes. So use those idioms. Enjoy, practice, and try to do it with a bit of flair. Have a fantastic evening. Enjoy hitting the sack a bit later and hope to see you soon in real, online, whatever. All the best. Dobranos. Here's Natalia just for a moment. Okay, I'm back. Mam nadzieję, że nauczyliście się i że macie jakieś te swoje wypracowania tam ułożone na karteczce, tak jak ja. Tutaj chciałam się podzielić, co mi tutaj wyszło po słuchaniu. So, for me, some idioms were a piece of cake and some of them only rang a bell to me. But I killed two birds with one stone by learning new idioms and hanging out with Marco at the same time. Even though I was feeling a little bit under the weather, I tried not to get my knickers in a twist and play it by ear by making up some sentences with idioms. Now it's time to hit the sack and I'm not pulling your leg because it's quite late. <laughs> I hope Marco likes my oh, well, play nice. with idioms. Nice, nice. And I um, I really hope you have your uh, <laughs> a note for Natalia. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, okay, and I hope you've got your own versions too. So feel free to send them to our email address. <laughs> I'll type it here so maybe you want to share. Uh, okay. Sometimes the email address maybe some of you would like to share and send some some uh, so some of your masterpieces and share with us. E, dobra, e, przejdę na polski. E, to tak, kochani, e, Marko tutaj mówił, że e, e, poprowadzi jeszcze tutaj dla nas kilka <laughs> webinarów. Muszę tu spojrzeć, czy potwierdza to. Także słuchajcie, pytanie do Was szybciutkie. Zaproponujcie tematy, bo te webinary są dla Was. Nie chcemy tutaj narzucać jakichś swoich tematów, bo chcemy je zrobić tak, żeby były dla Was praktyczne. No właśnie, super Robert, chcemy więcej. Więc bardzo proszę o napisanie, co chcecie, czego chcecie więcej. Ja tu mam od siebie jakieś propozycje, natomiast to są moje propozycje. Nie wiem, jeżeli się zgodzicie, na przykład phrasal verbs. Często tam, prawda, udręka tutaj, nie wiemy jak tutaj ich używać prawidłowo. E, może ja jeszcze mam tutaj taki jako slang, tak, tylko musimy pamiętać, że to jest takie, no, bardzo zależne od danego kraju, tak, anglojęzycznego. Marko akurat pochodzi z Australii, mógłby nas dużo nauczyć z australijskiego. Wiemy, że Australia bardzo e, ma jakby dużo wspólnego z Anglią, także oczywiście... Tak, ten slang brytyjski, australijski będzie podobny, natomiast amerykański będzie oczywiście już inny. Tak, no i na przykład co ja mam na myśli też, formal versus informal register. Natomiast to są moje jakieś tutaj, żeby Wam pomóc, prawda, jakimiś pomysłami. Natomiast jeżeli macie i inne jakieś pomysły, to bardzo proszę o napisanie tutaj w, w czacie. Jeżeli przyjdzie ten pomysł Wam troszeczkę później, prawda, to wtedy bardzo proszę napisać do nas, do nas maila, podałam go wcześniej, także śmiało, śmiało piszcie. Albo oczywiście możecie napisać na Facebooku. Na Facebooku nas znajdziecie pod nazwami się British School Warszawa Wawer. Także oczywiście bardzo prosimy wszystkie osoby, które jeszcze nas nie nie polajkowały, zalajkować nas, bo tam będą informacje, świeże informacje na temat nadchodzących webinarów, na temat konkretnej daty, bo ten webinar będzie na pewno pod koniec listopada, ale szczegóły podam na Facebooku, także zapraszam do, do polubienia strony, bo będzie najbezpieczniejszy sposób, żeby nam nic nie umknęło. Jeżeli ktoś się na przykład spóźnił albo chciałby ten, ten webinar jeszcze raz sobie otworzyć i przypomnieć wszystkie idiomy, to zapraszamy na naszego YouTube'a. Też znajdziecie nas pod nazwą brytyjską Warszawa, brytyjską Wawer na YouTubie. Także tam są wszystkie też pozostałe poprzednie webinary, które też Marko prowadził. Tutaj też Łukasz prowadził. Także też zapraszamy do obejrzenia jego webinarów. Do nadrobienia na YouTubie wszystkie one są nagrane. Dobrze, więc... 
Dobra, dobra. Ok, to piszcie oczywiście, tak jak mówię, swoje, swoje propozycje śmiało, bo chcemy, chcemy zrobić tak, żeby, żebyście wy naj, najwięcej z tego skorzystali. Slang, no właśnie. Ok, dziękujemy Anito za podesłanie tutaj odpowiedzi. Dobrze. Dziękujemy Państwu bardzo, państwu bardzo serdecznie, A w imieniu Marka tutaj też dziękuję całego British School Waver, naszego całego zespołu. A zapraszamy do nas na kawkę, wpadajcie do nas też na żywo, A jeżeli ktoś ma za daleko, to oczywiście zapraszamy online. A zapraszamy też do śledzenia też naszej strony, co się tam dzieje, bo dzieje się u nas generalnie dużo. I dobranoc! Time to hit the sack! Right? <laughs> Good night. Good night. Sleep well. Pronunciation. Yeah, we've got another. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Będziemy jeszcze tutaj chwilkę, jakieś dwie minutki, także jeżeli coś jeszcze tam wpadnie Wam, dobranoc, Robercie. Uh, thank you so much. Pronunciation, yeah. Także piszcie jeszcze, dobrze? Dwie minutki jeszcze zaczekamy przed zamknięciem pokoju, także jeżeli uh, coś, jakieś pomysły macie, to śmiało, śmiało pisać. Pronunciation, it could be this, mm -hmm. uh, the one last time uh, we exactly. some pronunciation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tak, tak. Marko mi tutaj też podpowiada, dla Grzegorza tutaj informacja, gdyż tak, pronunciation no to było po poprzednim poprzednim webinarze. Okay. Także troszeczkę tak, troszeczkę było tam temat na temat false friends. A i, I też podobieństw i, i małych różnic w wymowie wyrazów. Także zapraszamy na YouTube'a. To jest webinar pod tytułem Get, uh, get Better to Be Better Understood. Uh, mark. Także tam, tam na pewno też, Grzegorzu, znajdziesz. Um, na pewno kilka tam wskazówek i odpowiedzi na ten temat. Także zapraszamy na YouTube'a. Super. Super, bardzo się cieszymy. Zapraszamy do polajkowania, to jeszcze trochę nam brakuje, do, żeby było 500, także pomóżcie nam trochę. Wbijajcie na fejsa i będziecie na bieżąco. Dobra, także e, my się żegnamy, ale tylko na dzisiaj, bo jutro znowu coś się od nas pojawi na fejsie, także e, zapraszamy do śledzenia nas. Polajkowany, super, dzięki. O, i od Marko. Dobra, piszcie śmiało te propozycje swoje, mamy jeszcze e, miesiąc i, i, i mamy czas do tego się przygotować, także zapraszamy. Bye, bye. bye. Sleep well. <laughs>